Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokesh here and Zach Foster. And we are in Ohio with a broken down Freedom Mobile waiting to get a new transmission put in it. But while we're here waiting, we started complaining, you know, but no, more than that, we, we started talking about the, the movement. Now, Zach here, Zach, you're involved not just with the Libertarian Party in the United States, but also the Cuban Libertarian Party and the Venezuelans. And I didn't plan on this, but I have to point out that from what I've heard from you about them, they're kind of subject to some of the same drama pitfalls th that we are here in America, right? It happens. It happens, yeah. But, uh, you know, there, there's been uh, some disagreements inside those libertarian movements about what to do about all the violence. Now, in Cuba and Venezuela, they have a very legitimate reason to be concerned about violence. In the United States, a few people have been attacked by Antifa, but other, other than that, I'm, I'm wondering, why are we making such a big deal? Hold on, before we get ahead to that, Zach, there, there's like, like LP Cuba. Yes, the Cuban how LP. Many, uh, how many, now I, I know that the, the party is, is much bigger than the core of activists. Like how big are, is the, the, the hardcore group of activists that make up L, LP Cuba? I would estimate that the hardcore activists are uh, about 50 people. Um, that's 50 people in three provinces, so like 30 in Havana and then 10 and 10. I'm not gonna say where the other ones are right now, but um, they've also got alliances. So 50 hardcore people and they, you know, they also get their friends and family to show up. Now it's awesome. It's freaking awesome that we have a libertarian party in Cuba that's as vibrant as that. But with only a hardcore cadre of 50 activists, there's already infighting. And Zach was complaining specifically that they're like tattling on each other to him at a dollar a minute big, yeah, exactly. on international phone calls to talk about like what people in the party are doing wrong. And this is kind of a recurring theme here in in the united states which is the heart of the global freedom movement if i if i dare say so yeah, you're all not a real libertarian <laughs> you're all a bunch of socialists there you go um and by the way that's a mises quote <laughs> mises said you're all a bunch of yeah socialists. he literally said you're all a bunch of socialists and he stormed out of the room <laughs> well there i'm quoting mises doesn't, doesn't i feel smarter already I, I was quoting mises and i didn't even know it i thought i was quoting a meme well liberty's but, sexy <laughs> so there's this temptation uh, in the movement and, and well to, to get to get caught up in the drama to get caught up in issues that that are distraction issues and you know I, I didn't even think that, that we were gonna get into it from this angle because um, we were talking about Antifa and being distracted by mm -hmm. by like by the issues like well, we're talking about to be honest I've we've all had these arguments with other libertarians you know in English about you know how this or that person you know minarchists aren't real libertarians anarchists aren't real libertarians I never thought that I would be having these same conversations again in Spanish it, it is kind of weird for me like after having been in this movement 10 years I, I love going to libertarian events I love meeting our people on the road it's always a blast um, However, there are some conversations that you hear where it's just so gosh darn predictable. Where you hear like one libertarian say something, and you know the libertarian standing next to him has to say something, something different. along the lines yeah. of X because he said Y, and then that's just. But more importantly, uh, Zach, you were you were. Um, we can call out Chris by name here, right? He's public uh... about everything. We love Chris. John Cox. I don't like to. You know, I love, I love Chris. We're going to make an example out of him with this video. Now, and, and we're only singling him out for, like, very specific things that he's just one example of. So there are people, plenty of people like this that we wouldn't say we love as much as Chris. So, Chris, mwah, we love you. We do but, love you. We do love you. But we are very concerned about the whole um, uh, national socialist sympathizing thing. Now we're not gonna, you know, trash you for you know specific things that you believe. Um, we're we're not even gonna trash the actual national socialists. They have the right to do whatever it is that they want to do, and they have the right to peacefully assemble. Nobody's getting in the way of that. My concern is. If we are making arguments such as there is no such thing as a Nazi today, there are only American National Socialists. Hold on, oh, just be clear. That's that's we as in you're talking about Chris. Yes. Um, so so I'm wondering um, why why still cling to the libertarian brand and why associate us with National Socialists? I mean, I can sympathize with the fight against communism, especially with my Cuban and, and Venezuelan brothers. That's the actual fight against communism. 
but um, why do we have to you know gloss over everything that the the National Socialist movement has done you know since 1921 to, to, to the present why do we have to gloss over that remember it was not the communists who caused Mises and Hayek to have to flee for their lives from Austria in 1938 that was the Nazis and if we want to get into these games by by saying well you know uh, there's no such thing as a Nazi there's only libertarian national socialists uh, you know the the, the national Whoa, socialists. No, no, there's, there's no such thing as a libertarian national socialist yeah correct I, disagree Zach, with that. I don't I don't like your wording here because you make it sound like we're the ones saying these things that we're, we're criticizing Chris for okay fair enough, <laughs> fair enough but I just have, to, just have to clarify because libertarians we always have to clarify um, so yeah, that, that's just what my question is. Why are we associate? Excuse me. Why associate the brand of libertarianism with these people on the far right? Who the only thing that they really have in common with us is a hatred of communism. Now I will fight the good fight with anybody, but why do we have to start promoting hatred? Why do we have to start pretending that it's actually okay to be saying we should be putting human beings created in the image of God into helicopters and then dropping them out? Um, that's just very inconsistent with, with everything that I think we stand for, in my humble opinion. Zach, as, as great as that point is, I think there's a, a somewhat bigger point to be made here. Okay, and I'm receptive. It's, it's like, why are we talking about Nazis at all? I mean, first of all, in the United States, they're an infinitesimally tiny portion of the population. Just because they come out and turn themselves into the Tiki Taliban to oppose vanilla ISIS. <laughs> you know, like, we don't really God, have to the give them any more credence or respect or weight than that they deserve but even bigger than that even bigger than that even bigger than that all right so uh, why the question is who's the enemy no 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 no. it's why do we ever allow ourselves to be distracted by issues like this and, and i don't mean like this with within chris john cox's posts of whatever because you know, I, I think Chris is a great guy. I think he gets. I think at, at, at heart he is. But, I also you know, I don't, think he plays to a very large audience yeah, that agrees yeah, with that. that. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't know Chris greatly personally. I can't like vouch for him. But if you study COINTELPRO, and I'm not suggesting that he is, but let's let's think about like what would COINTELPRO be doing today to disrupt activist movements? You know, they're not assassinating. Uh, you know. Peace movement, anti-war movement, Black Panther activist leadership at this point. All they're doing is, and even back then, trying to render us ineffective. And today, Negative if they can, if, for those of us who are trying to reduce the size of government, if they can just slow us down enough so that government is growing faster than we're having an effect of slowing it down, they get to keep winning. And when we get distracted with stuff like that, they win. So uh, even even talking about it like this, Zach, I'm kind of like, no, no. And, and I wish I could say, if you're not doing what I'm doing, if you're not helping out with my campaign, then then you're wrong. And you need to get on board. That's 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 the ego talking, so what's, right? What's the bigger focus? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll use, again, I'll, I'll use myself as an example here because people like to learn from my mistakes. I've, and I've made a lot. <laughs> but no, specifically in this, having made all the mistakes that I've made over the last decade of activism, uh, I've really learned how to sharpen my focus as much as possible. And so I've got two things going on that are really the focus of my activism. And one is the book, Freedom. And it's the ultimate red pill. It wakes people up. It can, wins converts to libertarianism. And it's winning ground that can never be taken back, even while it's fighting inch by inch, essentially. And the second one is the presidential campaign of dissolving the federal government entirely. Bingo. And this is hugely important. And I've talked about this in other videos as a strategic shift for the freedom movement. We're not arguing politics. We're not talking philosophy. We're not debating in an echo chamber anymore. We're coming up with practical policy that immediately improves everyone's lives by applying our principles. And if you can show me that there's a better way forward than dissolving the federal government, than dissolving the state governments and getting government down to the county level, hey, got it. I'll jump on board with what you got going on and I would want to support that. So I don't want to put this out there as a standard, like you got to do what Adam's doing or you're wrong. But I would, I would say that you do kind of have to embrace this way of, of looking at, of thinking about your activism. Because I can't say that Chris, it, it, with, with what you say he's been talking, I don't, I don't keep up that much on social media and everything, but... Um, well, if, you gotta if, know here, Chris. I know, yeah, no, well, if, well, I know Chris because I love him, because he's a good guy, and I, and I believe 
that he's a voluntarist and that, mm -hmm. that he's doing this. He's involved with the cause in general because he cares about freedom and he wants to help us work towards a more free society. But then you got to judge people by their fruits, right? And this is where you go, well, could someone be an infiltrator of our movement? Could someone be a government plan? You know, if I sent someone to your organization who's really enthusiastic and really excited and wants to volunteer for everything, but causes just enough drama and interpersonal conflict to pull your group's effectiveness down by 5%, well, if I send you 20 people like that, you're done. You're useless, right? So in this case, I look at someone who's doing this, and I understand that there's a lot of emotion tied into this, that we're, that we're all, is. that human beings are irrational, emotional creatures, and that's okay. We're all motivated by different things, but fundamentally the same basic drives of the human experience of love and, and wanting to, to, to love other people, wanting to be loved, wanting to provide value for those around us. And if, if, if you stay in touch with that, you're not going to get distracted by this stuff anymore. I mean, and I've, mm -hmm. I've made, like I said, I've made all the mistakes. You've seen me talk about all sorts of useless stuff that doesn't contribute to a greater understanding, that doesn't wake people up. I've argued issues. I've talked about the news. You know, I used to do a three-hour daily podcast. And I, I hate to say it was a waste of time, but it certainly wasn't the most efficient use of my time. We woke a lot of people up with Adam versus the man. It was a learning experience. experience. And I was in the Marines. We like to learn the hard way, so, you know, that's okay. But... I, I'm, I'm just, we're doing this video, and I, I invited Zach to join me in doing this video to share his perspective that he brought to my attention with that recent experience with, with talking to Chris on Facebook. But um, this this video, I really want to make the bigger point about, like, stay focused. Mm -hmm. I'd and, like to say two things real quick. Well, hold on, by that, let's just say, by that, I mean, stay focused on what's efficient, what's effective, and stay in the love that's behind freedom for yourself. Zach? Now, on that topic, I just want to reiterate, this, you know, this is... At the end of the day, an intellectual disagreement. Chris, we still love you. We still care about you. You're one of us. And when I say that I owe you a beer, I am dead serious. I have written so many articles this year just uh, just uh, disagreeing with whatever it is that you were saying in your articles. All right, so you are already inspiring me, inspiring me to create fresh content for other people to learn from. And I respect the hell out of that. So literally, when I'm in your town or you're in my town, your beer is on me. The next thing is, we've had the opportunity to that's, talk to that, some... That's beautiful, by the way. Thank, thank you. you. We've had some opportunities to talk to some left-wing folks on this tour, including a number of socialists in left-wing cities. And a lot of these people have heard our platform. And we realize that, you know, some of these leftists, they want single-payer. You know, they're, they're not going to stop. So what, the, what a lot of them are saying to us is, they are willing to let the Republic of Texas, you know, secede and go free and cling to their God and their guns, or Arizona, you know, as long as we uh, respect the, the free city of San Francisco instituting single-payer health care on the city level, and then San Francisco <laughs> can join the EU, which is what they've always wanted to do. But the fact of the matter is, we have people on the far left and people on the far right who are agreeing with this message that the common enemy is the federal government who is always trying to divide and conquer. And their divide and conquer is so successful that we had to make a video because I was talking shit. <laughs> was, that, was, that, was that an apology? Oh, it wasn't an apology, it was an explanation. It was a you clarification. For talking shit? No, just a clarification of what uh, motivated us to have this talk. Well then, you should apologize to the freedom movement and all of your fans and supporters for letting yourself get distracted. Okay, I think that's reasonable. You know what, I do apologize to the freedom movement and to anybody who reads my stuff if I've ever caused or written anything that's divisive, if I've caused hard feelings in you, if I've made other people want to walk away from the movement, I apologize for that. I wish I could take it back. The only thing we can do is move forward. Same here, yeah, what, what he said. And anytime you argue with people, you play politics, you debate, you're missing an opportunity. If you win a debate, you have already lost the chance to share what is important to you out of love and passion and joy. And if you are debating within the movement, silly stuff, well, then you've already lost the opportunity to work together on something like Kokesh for Not President pushing this message of dissolving the federal government as a way to advance America because we are too good for this government and we don't have to be united under a single government to be united as Americans and united in freedom. And really, if you're, you're a libertarian, you want to have a bigger impact, it can't be about being a debate club. We have to make this a political force, and it's never going to happen if we get distracted by petty, silly shit like this. So stay focused on freedom. Stay focused on love. Mwah. Peace.